Docker is a radical way to host an Oracle Apex environment on your computer that both minimizes the strain you impose on your system's memory and maximizes your potential to version and share your database configuration. In this video, I'm going to cover the details of running the latest version of Apex from scratch on your computer using Docker. Let's begin by assembling our ingredients. First ingredient, download the latest version of Apex and unzip it in the path Docker. To do this, simply Google Download Oracle Apex, hit the first link, and accept the license agreement. Then, move it to the folder structure you've prepared and unzip it. Next ingredient, download my database configuration script named install underscore apex 514.sh, link in show notes, and move it to the directory you just created, docker slash apex. Make sure you replace the email on line 37 with your own email. We need two things for Oracle REST data services as well. First off, git clone the git repo of my colleague Martin D'Souza, see show notes, in the path docker slash ORDS. Next up, download the latest version of ORDS. To do this, simply Google download Oracle ORDS, hit the first link, accept the license agreement, then unzip it in the same folder docker slash ORDS. Final ingredient, make sure that docker is installed on your computer. You can do this by typing docker version on the command line. Make sure you can also log in. While we're at it, visit store.docker.com, log in, search for Oracle Enterprise Edition, and agree to the terms and conditions. Now that we have all of these prerequisites assembled, let's start by kicking off your Oracle database and installing the latest version of Apex. Two small pieces of configuration. Number one, create an empty folder called Oracle in the path Docker. You're going to mount this folder to your Docker container so that all database configuration gets stored in this folder. This is not a requirement, but gives you some options to share your configuration with your teammates, as we will discuss. Number two, create a Docker network. I'm going to call it Oracle underscore network. Super simple. This will permit your containers to easily talk with one another. Now let's launch our Oracle database. You've given this container the name Oracle, which means other containers on the Oracle underscore network can refer to it by this name. You map the container's database port 1521 to external port 32122. You instruct it to listen on the network you've created. As I touched on earlier, you then map your local folder structure docker slash oracle to the containers folder slash orcl. All of the database configuration will be stored here. This is a good idea because after you've done all that you want with the database, you can simply zip and share the contents of this folder with your teammates, thereby sparing them from having to repeat your work. I also mount the local folder docker slash apex to the container. The last line in this docker run command refers to the official Oracle database image on the Docker repository. This will work if you've already accepted their license agreement on store.docker.com. Depending on the processing power of your computer, your Oracle container may take a few minutes to start up. In the background, know that a ton of configuration scripts are being run inside of your container, building the database and populating your mounted docker slash oracle folder with around six gigabytes worth of configuration files. Once the container has a status of healthy, you can log in and configure it to where you want it to be. Be warned, while this step isn't complicated, it could easily take over 20 minutes. We start by logging into the container and navigating to the mounted folder that contains the configuration files for the latest version of Apex. After making my configuration file executable, kick it off and we'll discuss what it's doing. You start by first removing the existing Apex installation in the container database. This is necessary if you want to create a pluggable database, or PDB, that does not have Apex pre-installed. You then proceed to create a new PDB with 5.1.4 in the name because we plan to install Apex 5.1.4. You open the PDB, you install Apex 5.1.4 in the new PDB. This step can take a while. Finally, you configure Apex to communicate with ORDS. Two final pieces of configuration. You configure your ACL privileges, and you create an admin user to log into Apex. I hope you remember to switch out the placeholder email here. Third step. While the previous step is cooking, you can start to prepare a second container for our Oracle REST data services. There is currently no Oracle ORDS official Docker image in the repository, but with the ingredients you assembled in your Docker ORDS folder at the top of this video, you can easily build the requisite image yourself and then, if you like, share it with your teammates by pushing it to your Docker hub. To build the requisite ORDS image, navigate to your Docker slash ORDS folder 
and run this docker build command, where 3.0.12 is a tag identifying the version of ORDS you are installing. Upon successful completion, you'll find an image with the name ORDS in your Docker images. If you want to spare your teammates from the minor inconvenience of downloading the latest version of ORDS and cloning Martin D'Souza's Git repository, as we did at the top of this video, you can push this image to your Docker hub. I'd offer to share my own with you, but doing so may violate Oracle's terms and conditions. For this final step, you'll want to wait for your Apex installation script to complete before going further. In this step, you'll spin up your ORDS container that will talk to your Oracle database and finally be able to access your Apex web interface. Let's walk through this command. You name the container ORDS underscore 514 to match the name of the Oracle pluggable database and Apex version, because that gives you the option to simultaneously spin up other ORDS containers that serve up different Apex installations on different PDBs in your multi-tenant Oracle database. Next time you want to start this container, you'd simply run docker start ORDS underscore 514. As before, you place this container on the Oracle underscore network that you created so that it can communicate with the Oracle container. Next, we pass in some configuration property values necessary for the ORDS installation. You identify the name of the database host to match the name of your database container. You let ORDS know that it should communicate with the database on port 1521. You instruct this installation of ORDS to listen for the PDB that we specially configured with the latest version of Apex. You then pass in the appropriate values for the passwords for the database users. Apex public user, Apex listener, Apex res, ORDS, and CES. You mount the local Apex images folder so that ORDS can serve them up appropriately. You map the container's port 8080 to port 32514 so you can access it in your browser on port 32514. Finally, you instruct your container to build on the Docker image that you built. After running this command and getting no error messages, we can now switch to a browser to confirm that we're done. You can now log in to your Apex internal workspace with the values set by the Apex installation script you ran earlier. Username admin, password or doc underscore db1, see show notes. Don't forget, your work can be leveraged for the benefit of your colleagues to spare them some of the heavy lifting you just did. If you zip and share the contents of your docker slash oracle folder and push your ORDS image to your docker hub, you can spare your colleagues from having to download ORDS, clone Martin D'Souza's Git repo, and perform any configuration on the Oracle container, including installing Apex. See show notes for more details. All of these recommendations are subject to the constraints of your Oracle license agreement.